So constraint satisfaction. Constraint satisfaction is when you have a bunch of variables. Each variable can have a bunch of values. And you want to pick values for all of your variables such that they satisfy a set of constraints. So let me give you a concrete example. So let's say that we have a couple of variables. And I'll just pick three, A, B, and C. I'll just call it that. And let's say that the variable A can take on the values 1, 2, 3, and 5. B can take on the values 1, 2, 7, and 8. And C can take on the values 1, 8, and 10. So um, here are the variables, and here are the respective values they can take. Now we're going to say that you can't just pick any combination of these values for the variables. The picked values have to satisfy a set of constraints. So I'll put that here. Okay, so we will say that the picked value for A has to be greater than the picked value for B. And the picked value for B has to be greater than the picked value for C. So you have to pick variable you have to pick values for each of these variables such that these constraints are satisfied that's what a constraint satisfaction problem is now you can probably if you pause for a couple minutes maybe you can probably think of a way to pick values such that you satisfy these constraints pretty quickly in your head like for example here we clearly notice that a has to be the biggest then b has to be the second biggest then C so we can say okay let's pick a really big value for a 5 and then let's pick a smaller value for B 2 and then an even smaller value for C 1 so 5 2 1 that's a solution to this constraint satisfaction problem um, but that's kind of like using uh, taking advantage of our human brain computers cannot do that so we need to develop a systematic way of um, solving this um, such that an algorithm a computer can execute it so here's how you systematically go through um, combination of values and figure out which ones satisfy your constraint so we're gonna say well, we're gonna start in a state such that there's no value for a there's no value for B and there's no value for C right that's our initial state that we're at um, and then we'll say, okay, first we'll go ahead and pick a value for A. What values can I choose for A? 1, 2, 3, and 5. So it can either be 1, 2, 3, or 5. And this is all going to be a value for A. So I'll put it right over here, like that. So let's go ahead with the first one. We'll say that for we're going to pick... 1 for A, right? Okay, now once we've picked a value for A, let's go ahead and pick a value for B. Well, what can we choose from there? 1, 2, 7, and 8. So it can be 1, 2, 7, and 8. So that is a value for B. Alright, now let's look at picking 1 for B. Well, if we pick 1 for B, let's think if we're violating a constraint. Since we picked 1 for A as well, A is not greater than B, so this violates one of our constraints. So in other words, we cannot pick 1 for B. So we're at a dead end here. Okay, now what about 2? If we pick 2 for B, still, that's not less than A. Notice that B has to be less than A, right? And we picked 1 for A. 2, 7, and 8, none of those are less than A. So really, we can't pick 2 for B, 7, or 8. So we've basically arrived at a dead end. What this kind of tells you is that when you pick 1 for A, no, there's really no values you can pick for B without violating a constraint. So you say, okay, well, I probably should not pick um, 
1 for a, so you backtrack, you go back to your initial state. And now you say, okay, let me go ahead and try um, 2. Let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, I just cleaned it up a little so we have more room here. So we'll say, okay, what if we instead go ahead and pick 2 for a instead? So if I pick 2 for a, for b I can pick any of these four values. So again, I can do either 1, 2, 7, or 8, right? Now, can I pick 1? Is 1 b less than 2, which is a? Yes. So this does not violate a constraint, so I can actually go ahead and pick 1 for b. So we'll, we'll go down this path. Now we got to choose a value for c. So what can I choose for c? 1, 8, or 10? So 1, 8, or 10 for c. Alright, let's try 1 for c. Is 1 less than 1? Because we picked 1 for b as well? No. So picking this 1 violates a constraint. What about 8? Is 8 less than 1? No. And neither is 10. So once again, we've reached a dead end when we picked 1 for b. So that means we cannot pick 1 for b. So we, sh we should not pick 1 for b. We should let instead, let's go ahead and try a 2 here. Let me first clean this up so I have room to draw for the 2. Okay, so what if I try to go ahead and pick 2 uh, for b? Well, we got to check our constraint again. Is 2 less than a, which we picked 2 for as well? So is 2 less than 2? No, that violates our constraint. So we can't pick 2 for, um, for b. What about 7? Well, is 7 less than a? Again, remember that the, in this path, the picked value for a is 2. So keep that in your mind right now. Burn that right into your mind. We pick 2 for a. Is 7 less than 2? No. Is 8 less than 2? No. So all these values would violate our constraints. So what that tells us is where we've now hit another dead end, right? So that tells us that we cannot pick 2 for um, a. This path is a dead end. So we identified that the first path, which was picking at a equals 1, is a dead end. a equals 2 is a dead end. Now let me erase a little bit of this stuff here. All right, so now let's say, okay, all right, say, what if we try to pick 3 for A? Okay, again, for B, we have four choices, 1, 2, 7, and 8. It, can we pick 1? Is, is 1 less than 3? Yeah, we can pick 1. So if we pick 1 here, now for C, we can do 1, 8, or 10. So is 1 less than 1? No, that violates a constraint. Is 8 less than 1? Violates a constraint. Is 10 less than 1? Violates a constraint. So we can't go down this path, which means we can't pick 1 for B. Okay, now let's say, what if we pick 2? Well, let me clean it up so that I have more room to show you the 2. So 1, let's erase it. We know that that's going down a bad path. So I'm just going to do that. So what if we pick 2 for B? Well, for C, we can again pick 1, 8, or 10. If we pick 1, is 1 less than 2? Yes, it is. So there we go. So now let's look at this path. I'm going to try to highlight this path in a different color. So look, let's look at this path. When we pick A equals 3, B equals 2, and then c equals 1, you notice that did not violate any of our constraints. So we've just found a solution to this constraint satisfaction problem. And the solution is 3 here, 2 here, and then 1 here. Now that's, that might not be the only solution. And in fact, if we keep on doing what I just explained to you, um, you'll systematically find the rest of the solution. So if your goal was to find a solution, you're done here. Return that solution. 
If your goal was to find another one as well, go ahead and keep on going. If your goal is to find all of them, you can keep on doing this. So our goal was to pick values for all of our variables such that all the constraints were satisfied. In other words, none of the constraints were broken. And we did this by systematically picking var values. First for our first variable, and then for subsequent variables, we pick values such that they don't violate constraints based on the previously picked variables. So a wide variety of problems um, are hidden constraint satisfaction problems. For example, there's this what's known as a map coloring or graph coloring problem. So here's an example of this type of a problem. You have a map. Here we have a map of Australia and the map has a bunch of regions and you're given three colors or a certain set of colors. For this map, we're given three colors. And then you are told to color the map such that no two adjacent regions are the same color. So that's the problem right now. Let's say, let's see how this can be a constrained satisfaction problem. Let's see how this is a constrained satisfaction problem. So for constrained satisfaction problem, we know that we need a set of variables and we need some constraints that values of these variables need to satisfy. So our variables here we have is the each region, one variable for each region. So I'm gonna call this region one, region two, region three, four. So our variables are region one all the way to region six. What values can each of these variables take? Well, each of the variables can be one of three colors. So region one can either be red, green, or blue. Same with region two, region three, etc. So we have our variables, we have our values, and now we have our constraints. We only have one constraint here, and we can state it in a bunch of ways, but the simplest is no adjacent regions can be the same color. That's our only constraint. So there we go. Now you solve this problem the same way you'd solve any constraint satisfaction problem. You've got your variables, R1 through R6. Each variable can take the value red, green, or blue. And you have to pick variables, um, value, you have to pick values for variable, variables such that no adjacent regions can be the same color. So how do you detect this adjacency, right? Anytime you hear that, you should think graph. So you can model this as a graph. Each region can be a node. And then you simply have edges between neighbors. So an edge here, an edge here, an edge here. There will be an edge here. An edge. So again, you have a set of variables a set of values, um, we can satisfy our constraint that no adjacent regions can be the same color because we can detect adjacency because we're going to model this as a graph. So let me go ahead and do a quick example here. I'm going to move the constraint to make some room. All right, so our starting state, let's say that we're going to pick a value for region 1. Okay, so let's say that we're going to pick red for region 1. So now for region 2, we can pick the options are red, green, and blue, right? Okay, so since we picked red for region 1, can we pick red for region 2 without violating our constraint? No, because they're adjacent to one another, right? Region 1 and region 2 are adjacent to one another. And picking red would violate our constraint, so we can't go down this path. So we say, okay, we're going to pick green. Now we've picked a value for region 1, a value for region 2. Now let's pick a value for region 3. Again, it can be red, green, or blue. But let's see which one of these doesn't uh, violate our constraint. So since region 3 is adjacent to 2 and 1, region 2 was green, so it cannot be green, and region 1 was red, so it cannot be red, therefore it must be blue. 
Now we go ahead and pick a value for region 4. It can be red, green, or blue. And again, you kind of get the idea. You'll have to look at its neighbors and make sure you pick a color such that uh, the neighbors are not the same color. The key here, the key thing here is that you can tell which uh, are the neighbors of a particular node because we're modeling them as a graph. 